So, the epistle today in the Extraordinary Form is from the book of the prophet Daniel. And it's really one of the more famous stories uh, from the book of the prophet Daniel um, because it's a very uh, a very engaging story, really grips the imagination. It's been rendered in different ways even for children to kind of help them, uh, you know, learn uh, uh, important stories uh, of, of the saints uh, in, the, in, in the scriptures. And it's the story of Daniel in the lion's den. And uh, Daniel has been given prophetic wisdom by God. You know, Daniel's a prophet, and he's also kind of, in the way he uses his prophetic abilities, uh, uh, a wisdom figure, um, figuring out the true meaning of things, uh, behind things, for the glory of God, and to show the falsehood of, of, uh, of, of the pagan beliefs at the time. And um, here is one where that comes back, in a certain sense, to, to have repercussions for him. He is, uh, in the story of Bell and the Dragon, he's proved that the statue is not really walking, and he... And this is all just a trick they're doing, and uh, he slays the, snare, the serpent, the dragon, etc. And so people are mad at him for this, and now they want him dead. So they throw him in the lion's den for, for seven days, thinking, well, he'll, he'll definitely be uh, killed by the lions. But uh, the Lord miraculously preserves him, miraculously makes the lions um, docile, miraculously feeds Daniel from the hand of the other prophet of his day, Habakkuk, who is pro prophesying in Israel back uh, to those who are, were left behind, uh, you know, and God's angel miraculously brings Habakkuk to, to feed Daniel. You know, and so at the end of the seven days, when the den is opened again, they are amazed to see Daniel still alive, still healthy, and the lions docile and having not touched him. And this, of course, shows forth in a very prophetic, as a prophetic sign, that, that the God of Israel is the God of all, and, uh, and that Daniel's God is the true God of all things over heaven and earth. And it might seem at the first look that this doesn't really parallel so well the parable, um, I'm sorry, the passage from the Gospel of John, which is um, where uh, it's the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, and our Lord, because of uh, the plots against him and because it's not yet his time uh, to, to offer up his life on the cross, he decides not to go to Jerusalem publicly. But instead, after his disciples go to the feast, he comes up secretly, kind of in a private manner. And the passage ends with there being murmuring among the crowds about him. You know, he's a good man. No, he's a deceiver. He seduces the people. And, you know, they don't really know what to do about him. And, uh, there are, and there's a lot of murmuring against him. But I think this is important because it shows something. That Daniel is in the den of the lion is very much um, a prefigurement of our Lord in the tomb. That Daniel is sealed up as to be dead in this, in this den, in the, den, in this cave, in this very tomb-like kind of piece of earth so that he might be devoured, right? And the lion has a lot of imagery in Scripture, but one of them that we use, and it comes up often in the Compline, in Night Prayer of the Church, is, you know, be sober and alert, St. Peter says, your opponent, the devil, is prowling like a, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And so the idea that, that Daniel going into this den, this tomb-like den, being locked up with the lion, is symbolic of, 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 of original sin, of how we are under the power of the evil one, uh, you know, because we do not have a right relationship with God, and because of that, uh, we we he, we we can be devoured, if you will, dead and and led into the tomb. And the reality of God saving Daniel from this symbolically foreshadows the fact that he will, as Scripture uses this uh, term a lot, he that our our Lord's Father will rescue him from the lion's mouth, and and re remove him from the tomb, bringing him back to life. And so this murmuring of the crowds against him is uh, parallel to kind of the murmuring that was rising and rising against Daniel that comes to a head at the beginning of this passage that leads Daniel to be put into this symbolic tomb with the, with the lion, which can be symbolic of a number of things in Scripture, but I think here is very symbolic of the power of the enemy, of original sin, of that wound he has given us. And yet Daniel, by the Lord's miraculous power, is not devoured. Uh, the tomb does not become his end, but he is taken out, he is fed, uh, miraculously, and brought out again. And so this parallels our Lord. The crowds are murmuring against him. People are, are doubting him. This will come to a head eventually and, and lead to the leaders of the people rising up against him and uh, saying the same kind of similar things. You've insulted us. You've blasphemed. You've done this. Now you have to die. And yet, even though our Lord really will die, he will still be rescued from the lion's mouth because his Father will accept his sacrifice and he will be raised up again by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the resurrection of Christ might not just free Christ from the tomb, might not just restore Christ to life and glorify him, but that we might be restored through that, that the tomb might not also be our end, that our opponent, the devil, who is prone like a roaring lion, will not devour us, but that we, united with the cross of Christ, will be led through that tomb, through that um, 
in that place of death and not be devoured, but instead brought out again into new life. Because we have been miraculously fed by the Lord, because he has brought us through, and because by doing that, he restores us to eternal life. And I think especially now in the pandem- in this uh, coronavirus pandemic, where we have fear of disease, fear of death, or perhaps we know people who have gotten very sick or have even died, I think that is a message that we need to hear, uh, um, especially now, that death is not the end, that our Lord will deliver us through the tomb, through the lion, and deliver us from the lion's mouth, that we will have victory over sin, over death, over the enemy, if we hold on to Christ. Because like Daniel, more and more perfectly than Daniel, whose passage through the lion's den is only a prefigurement, our Lord will be led by his Father to the tomb, but through the tomb, into glory. And that glory is our promise as well. If we believe in Christ, if we have been baptized into his death, and therefore have a promise of his resurrection. And so our Lord, as he de- our Lord will deliver us from the lion's mouth, as his Father delivered him through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so death is not our end, but merely the means by which we enter into our true homeland, and we are restored uh, to uh, to our true uh, our true homeland, as Israel was restored after the exile. But we not to an earthly dwelling, but to a heavenly one, where a mansion has been prepared for us. So let's remember that as we go through Passion Week into Holy Week. Let's remember that and let it be our hope during this pandemic. And let that uh, allow us to cling to God more fervently, who will deliver us from the lion's mouth. As always, I'm remembering you in my prayers and my masses. Say an ave for me if you get the chance. Uh, Please stay safe out there, and always remember that God is in control.